Hello and welcome to Star Citizen Sunday with me, Ryan, aka Sifu Messiah. This is a weekly show which covers everything from the world of Star Citizen over the past week. Links are provided in the description for everything we discussed this show, so let's get on with it. So on this week's show, there's the usual 10 for the chairman, and around the verse, there's three new stretch goals to discuss, multi-crew ship system details, and a monthly report to get through. So on 10 for the chairman, I think I've included them all. A lot of them we've gone over before or we already know, but there's a lot of new backers out there, so welcome if you're new. And I will keep the questions in because obviously you may not have heard this previously. So starting with the first question, to what extent will electron electronic warfare play in the position universe? Chris Roberts explains that bigger ships will have an electronic warfare officer, so you'll have a specific role to play in electronic warfare, so it might be something you can become very uh, adapt adept with. There will be stations, different stations for each, I suppose, role as well in the, in the position universe, so certain ships will have an electronic warfare station where you would be based, and you will have all your little countermeasures, like jamming radars, hiding signatures, messing with people's computers on their ships. It didn't go into too much detail, but yes, is basically the answer. What sort of FPS weapons will we see? And in the FPS demo, we saw obviously ballistic weapons and laser weapons, so energy weapons. There was an electric shotgun, which is kind of a cool little weapon. Uh, and also he mentioned that rail guns will be available. Now basically he says that whatever ship weapons there are available now, there will be a smaller version for the FPS of those equivalent weapons. Not like like for like, but the, the, the general idea of them. He says they will all also have pros and cons for different weapons, you know, like certain like energy weapons won't go through shields, you need ballistic weapons or is it energy weapons will destroy shields and then ballistics will destroy armor so it's it's a big give and take so maybe you'll have to have one of each on your on your ship but when you're um when you're you're boarding other ships you've got to be careful hopefully there'll be different types of ammo he didn't mention anything about that although it wasn't the question um because obviously like armor piercing will probably breach the hull and then you'll be sucked into the vacuum so you've got to be careful he did mention that you know you may need to use a crossbow instead of which i, sh I suppose that confirms the crossbow so question three will recoil from guns cause players to be propelled backwards or in the opposite direction while in zero g and also will there be handheld points for setting up ambushing or camping as I like to call it, which I am a huge camper to be fair. Um, and apparently recoil wouldn't wouldn't do this. It wouldn't actually affect you too greatly in um, in zero G. He did say if you had a bazooka it probably would, but he did say then that that doesn't mean a bazooka's confirmed. So he says that energy weapons wouldn't really have a recoil. Ballistics may have a little effect, but nothing too great, nothing that's going to be so obvious that you're going to be flying backwards while you're trying to shoot, so I don't think it'll be noticeable really. A question after that was, can ships be magnetised to other ship hulls? So can you fly your M50 and magnetise to a Starfarer or whatever? Chris Roberts says he doesn't really know. Uh, he says it would be good in a way because you can then obviously cling onto a, a ship and the radar would probably not pick you up if you are a part of that ship. He says the code isn't available to do this when it comes to programming, but he did say it wouldn't be too difficult. I expect we may see it later on down the road if it's something we really want or that makes sense. Otherwise, it probably won't be. So, moving on. Will, oh, with, with other ships now having much larger cargo holds, what role would the freelancer play or be suited to? So it's quite a specific question, but I think the, the, it kind of asks a general question because he did say, you know, will some j jump points only allow certain sized ships through? So say, for example, if you have a huge Corvette style transporter, you will you be able to get through every jump point as maybe the freelancer would? And Chris Roberts, we've, we've heard this before, but again, for your new backers, it will have an effect on jump points. Some jump points will be only available for small ships to go through. So I think if you had something like an Aurora or an M50 or something like, you know, Hornet, something small that has jump capabilities, you will be able to get through the majority, if not all, of the jump points. Whereas if you had larger ships, maybe even the freelancer, but obviously we're thinking more like staff areas, you won't be able to go straight through every single jump point. You may have to go a long way around, which will open up these things that they call trading lanes. Obviously, if certain large ships can get through a certain jump point to go from, say, Sol to Terra, then I'm not even sure if they're connected. So you may, instead of probably going straight through one jump point or two, depending on how close they are, you will have to take the long route round through the larger jump points, which again, opening trading lanes, it'll be a safe route to take because it will probably be policed. There'll be a lot of ships out there doing the same run. So if you are in a smaller ship and you are worried about being shot at 
certain jump points, you can take the long way around just to be safe. So the Freelancer will be able to get through smaller jump points compared to a Starfarer. So next question, will having a high bounty affect your PvP slider? Now, if you're new to Star Citizen, the PvP slider is something Chris explained how PvP and PvE will be handled. So if you are someone who doesn't really want much PvP, which is player versus player, so online interactions with other characters, then you can slide your, your slider to mainly PvE. Now he did say out of about 100%, you'll only be able to go as low as 10% because you cannot completely escape real player interactions. So obviously if you had it up at 100%, then you would constantly be running into players as well as NPCs, but if you had it at PvE, then you'll, the majority of people you'll see, 90% of, of the people you will see will be NPC characters. Now, going to the question, if you have a high bounty for shooting players, for example, then you your slider will have no effect. So if you've opened up on a real player online and then you quickly slide it down to, you know, 10% of just PvE, then it's not going to have any effect. You are open game, fair game, sorry, for people to take you on as maybe bounty hunters, you know. If you open up on NPCs, then it will have a little effect where it will be, the majority of people coming after you will most likely be NPC characters, but obviously if you were attacking NPCs only anyway in the verse, there will probably be a job on the board for bounty hunters to find you, which will be real people. So if you're planning on being a pirate that is mainly PvE, be careful who you shoot, because obviously if you open up on a real player, you're going to be a target instantly, basically. Next question, which is a lovely little question. Can we visit moons? So can we land on moons as well as planets, obviously? And yes, there are... moon. Basically, Chris Roberts says a moon is just another landing location. Same with large asteroids as well. And he did say that there is currently an idea of having a mining colony on, on a moon. So whether or not this colony could be overrun by aliens and then you come down on a job to find out why you've not heard from them or to deliver something to them maybe and then you've got to fight your way through to figure it out. I don't know. Interesting. But yeah, so yes, you can land on moons. A bit like Destiny maybe. So next question. If you have a hangar on Terra but become a pirate in UEE space, will you be banned from Terra airspace? And... Chris says that you cannot be banned from airspace, but you can get attacked by the law enforcement in that area and obviously bounties if you've got a bounty on you. So if you've been causing trouble for the police, then you're going to be in trouble when you try and land on terror. Now, the way it'll work for pirates is you can get a spoof ID, like a fake ID, so you can, you know, blab your way through customs, but it'll probably cost you and it may be a little difficult, um, but I think cost will be the main the main downside to that. So he did say, you know, you're better off to set up shops elsewhere and if you've got ships within this landing zone, you can probably hire a real person to just take them to your new location. So again, you know, works on both sides, but like the real world, if you cause trouble in a certain area, you'll be, you know, hunted, basically. So the next question again, uh, will we find one-of-a-kind ships, weapons, gear, etc. in the Persistent Universe? And Chris says definitely there will be certain items that you cannot buy anywhere, only by finding somewhere. He did say something about maybe, you know, you need to explore and there might be like one shop on, like a legendary shop on, a, on one planet where the gun shop owner knows how to tweak a certain gun to make it super powerful or to make it super like efficient because obviously it won't just be like an overpowered gun that you know once you get it you can kill everything because there'll be trade-offs as we know so there's that sort of idea behind it but also if you find a derelict alien ship and you salvage you can probably find some alien tech or an alien weapon and then figure out a way of attaching it to your ship so there's going to be a lot and obviously this will work in way of gear and other ships not just weapons so will be a lot to find and the last question is to do with online oh sorry offline private servers the question specified will you know will you be able to play squadron 42 offline on a private server but i think they meant the persistent universe because obviously squadron 42 is a single player game which you can play offline or you can play online and have friends join you as your wing commanders where they'll drop in and just fly on your wing basically so in the persistent universe he says there will be private servers where you can host games but it won't to be it won't be to the scope and scale of the persistent universe as it just wouldn't work for them then you can have like one where you can put your own mods in you know you can do some training with your friends but the main there will always be a main persistent universe server which is the cig run one where everything will be affected so again you know you're not going to be able to go off and just be on your own and put it all to private and then go off and find everything but yeah so that's 10 for the chairman i hope you liked it let me give me your thoughts on everything and we'll move on 
So, as usual, around the verse number 23 this time, which was again Sunday and Ben, they started by explaining the Javelin Destroyer was on the, about the sale that they released 200 uh, concept ships at $2,500 each, and apparently they sold out in under 15 seconds. That is insane. Uh, the majority of the team are in the UK discussing Squadron 42 matters and arranging the mocap shoot, which is going to be happening sometime this month, I believe. The others are working in office, I think in America, the LA office, they're working on the Arena Commander version 1.0, which, again, I think we'll see before the end of the year. Maybe it's our Christmas present. Uh, they also mentioned wanted to welcome all the new backers. Now, obviously, with this sale of the Destroyer, it opened up a lot more tickets, well, a lot more spaces for new backers. So you could pledge $20 to buy into the game with an Aurora as a basic package. And if you are one of those new backers, welcome to the family. And welcome to the show. Hope you like it. So, news around the verse. Starting with Arena Commander, spectator mode improvements. And I think this means all the cameras and the, are getting a bit more finely detailed to make it a lot more cinematic. Also, you know, the chasing gun cameras have received improvements as well. So you're going to see a lot more videos, I expect, of really cool footage of Arena Commander. The Avenger and Mustang have entered QA. Now, they it, generally, this is, this is what comes before it is properly flight ready and released to the hangar, before it's hangar ready in the uh, in the scale of, of when it's going to be completed. And it's basically just being tested. There's still a few damage states to be, to be entered, but the flying it... QA and they're testing it out ready for version 1.0. So Squadron 42 landing is getting polished and this is manual and auto landing so in Squadron 42 when you have to land on maybe a capital ship or the destroyers or an address you can do it manually or you can do it automatically. To be honest I will probably do it automatically because I don't want to wreck the ship and come crashing through the windows. Anyway conversation proof and concept is ongoing. Now we know Chris Roberts has said that this it's a really cool system that they're using so he said it's not going to be like Mass Effect where you get one or two options to choose it's going to be a really in-depth thing. I don't have a clue what he could be doing with it but hopefully we'll see some of that soon. Uh, there's focus on finishing the Avenger damage states and apparently it's very very close as we say version 1.0 it'll be ready. So Persistent Universe the Art Core Bartender model is completed and I'll show you again now, but we saw earlier on last week or the week before some models of what he's going to be wearing. The nurse NPC character has started work. Hopefully it won't look like anything from Silent Hill because then I will have to do my own work on myself on ships. Um, Adissa and Meran Mariana landing zones are being designed now the first five landing zones now i don't know what system these are going to be on but i'm sure we'll find out soon and i like the idea of visiting all these new planets and new new landing zones so ships the starfarer exterior and interior are continued in concept phase and there's a little pick that the shoulders apparently a lot of people are waiting for this but it's still ongoing it is going to be used in the first squadron 42 chapter so we will see it in there so if we don't see it in flight within the arena commander which i doubt we will before we get to play squadron 42 then as soon as we start playing we'll see that and it'll be amazing and in fact i go back on what i just said there i expect we will see it in version 2.0 rather than squadron 42 first anyway moving on the five vandal ships have begun gray boxing now this is interesting we've got a destroyer a corvette a light fighter and a boarding ship so there's us just thinking it's just going to be all these little vandal size flying around not that we did i'm only joking but yeah it's going to have so many more different variants and prototype damage system is almost ready for production so this is a procedural system for damage states as we know currently for all the ships the damage states have to be done by hand where each item will be damaged it'll have a certain state of being fine and then 20 percent you know 50%, 100% and so forth. A procedural system is for these capital ships, which, are, as we know, the Bengal carrier is one kilometre in length. So having to do all the different damage states for a ship that size would take forever. So they're using procedurally type generation, which is a random generator, to do it for them, which is going to make things a lot more smooth and a lot more efficient. So in the FPS, they are researching and developing the push-pull zero-G system, as we know it's so you can manoeuvre around if you haven't got a suit with thrusters. They have reworked the, com the cover system is currently underway. They are no longer using a select to cover option. It's going to be an automatic thing. Now, I did not I did hear them say before that it's going to be like Far Cry, where if you duck behind something, you can click your aim button and look up or look to the side. 
So it sounds like it's going to be similar to that. The prone and crawl system is put into place, or is being put into place. And Ben Lesnick says that this is for when you need to enter vents and so forth, which sounds like a really good part of the the persistent universe or the FPS part, you know, where you land onto a space system, uh, or station, sorry, and you need to get yourself to a certain area, but there's obviously enemies on board this station. You can go through the vents. Now, will this open up the idea of going through the vents and then suddenly an alien like in Aliens coming the other way? I hope so, but I kind of hope not because I will literally shit my pants if I saw an alien coming the other way in a, in a, in a vent. So after news around the verse, we, as always, went to Mark, who is a bug smasher. And this, this week it was to do with the thruster states. Now, there are different thruster states depending, you know, requesting different signatures. So if you aren't moving, you're idle. So it'll be a default state. If you're boosting, there'll be a boost state. And then obviously there'll just be a, like a forward motion depending on the percentage of thrust you're using. Apparently when, when idle and you then switch to boost, it's fine. But when you try and stop boosting and then go back to idle, the signature from your thruster is, is staying the same as if you were boosting all the time. So that has to change because obviously when, version 1.0 comes out and all the different signatures for your ships are being noticed if you're just hiding and sitting there you don't want to be suddenly shot at because they can see you so so after that again as always most valuable post with will lewis and it goes to book who is giving it's a bloke who's given his nephews auroras for christmas and he's given them all sorts like a brochure and everything you know really cool presents and what a great uncle i must say so once we were finished with the most valuable post, we went to the customer service update, which because they are obviously with these new backers as well, I expect there's a lot of questions, a lot of issues probably still with, with hangers and so forth and packages, especially if you're spending two and a half grand on a um, on a destroyer. So they say, uh, they say, please be patient. They're awaiting if you are awaiting a response. Very busy at the moment. So just hang tight and they'll get to you. Uh, also, if you have purchased the little pilot figures, which I know I did. Again, I have no idea why. They're still some available and they will be shipping very soon for people who have purchased them. So this week's interview was held by James Pugh was with Stephen Cam or Toast as he is most likely known by the sounds of things who is the paralegal and he is obviously answering questions from the community so if you're interested in what he has to say check out the uh, the link below I'll put arena command up uh, around the verse I'll also it's, it's about halfway through so once we had finished with the interview with Stephen Cam they just wanted to mention a quick reminder that there's going to be a live stream on Friday the 19th of December now it'll start at 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. PST time which I believe is if you are a UK friend it is a 6 p.m. GMT start because they are obviously wanting to go around all the offices starting with the UK so 6 p.m. is going to be the closest they can get to uh, there's going to be a new commercial a little sale apparently and then other things to look forward to but as always every live stream they do I am literally sat glued to the screen so if you're interested in watching exactly what's happening with some mate like mate minor faults I expect tune in so this week they are also saying that you can fly the Hornet for free. You don't need to buy it. You don't need to, to do anything. You can just go into your arena commander, choose your ship, any Hornet. I'm going to go through them all. I'll hopefully put a video up during this episode of Star Citizen Sunday where you can see me flying around in the different Hornets. I always try and sort of go outside and then come in again just so you can get a good, good clear picture of them all. So if the Wave 18 on the Vandal Swarm is available yet, yeah. I shall be attempting it if I get time anyway. But yeah, the sneak peek, which is what we always tend to wait for, is a ship, as you can see, we they didn't specify. Ben Lesnick managed to hold his bite his tongue and, and not give it away, but it looks very vandal to me. The piping work on the thrusters looks very similar to the, the blade or the glaive, whatever it is that we see currently. So it could be one of those new uh, vandal ships. Anyway, that was around the verse. Let's move on. So, as it seems to be the common occurrence every week now, we have another letter from the chairman. It's always coming a bit later, you know, it's not straight after one stretch goal, because currently we're hitting two or three stretch goals in a week. It is unbelievable. We now have 7,400 new backers, which is insane. So, welcome to you all. I've said it before, but it's always nice to have new backers on board. And starting with the, obviously, $64 million stretch goal, which we reached well, last week, we, or earlier this week, sorry, they opened pets, so we can now have our own pets on board our ships, which is awesome. Um, 65 million stretch goal opened a new modular ship design, which was something he didn't specify, he didn't want to go into until, you know, we'd hit, we got closer, it was like a secret for him. And this is due to player feedback. So, obviously version 1.0, we know there's going to be new uh, paint schemes, the painting tool, uh, which includes like backers skins because I don't know like uh, I think it was on the 19th of November 2012 we if you backed before that you got a record breaker skin which was for a 5.5 million stretch goal which was 
the record breaker back then, Christ. And obviously higher pledges get other ship skins like, you know, the high pledge skins and so forth. I'm not really sure what they are because I'm not a high pledger to be honest. But the basically what, what we get for 65 million is enhanced ship modularity. And I'll just read the little blurb that he put up for this. It says, so you have the ship of your dreams but really wish that it could be customised to suit your needs a bit more than the off the shelf models. The new goal, a massive undertaking, is going to be of interest. So, we are looking to overhaul any suitable ships, including the Cutlass, the Avenger, the Retaliator and the Redeemer, to allow many modular components to be available as swap outs. For example, if you have a, if you've purchased a Redeemer, then using the new system you will have a you will have a variety of new modules available to refit the ship, internal and external, to suit your player requirements. So, if you wanted to make it into a bounty hunter ship, you could buy a stasis chamber module, which we have seen in the Cutlass, which is where you, if you catch a bounty, you get put in that, it's like a prison cell, holding cell in, in the ship. For the lower deck, which is obviously on the Redeemer, if you've not seen it, check it out, it's it's a boarding ship, so, or not a boarding ship, sorry, like a drop ship, so you have a valuable space for about eight soldiers down below in a big hold, where they get seated and booted, and then when you land, they go out and they fight, so you can put that in there instead of having that. Um, and you'll be able to capture and store fugitives to be delivered for their bounties at your leisure. So if, you know, also you could configure the upper deck to be outfitted with a long-range communication suite, allowing you to keep in touch with your infra agent, or infra agent, sorry, even when in deep space. So if you're fed up with bounty hunting, you can swap out a large cargo module in the lower deck, which is what I wanted to see in this ship, because I love the look of this ship. I didn't think I would, but it is gorgeous. To make profitable runs, uh, also explore a module with deploying a vehicle, so you can go planet side to do some recon. So manufacturers will still be offering pre-configured variants, so you can do whatever you like to your ship, basically. And this is going to go for many of the ships, as we say, all the different, like the Cutlass, the Avenger, all the ships, well, the majority of the ships will have all these different modularity uh, bits to, to buy and to swap out, depending on what role you want. And you can probably store them in your hangar for when you want to be a bounty hunter, for when you want to be a, a trade runner, anything you could think of. So that was for the 65 million stretch goal, which we have reached, but also we have reached the 66 million stretch goal now what this is going to entail so from now on he says they're going to reveal level of details and immersions at each stretch goal rather than giving you a reward for each backer you know who pledged beforehand there will still be rewards like that just occasionally rather than every every month or every or every stretch goal sorry so this one we're starting with he said he's starting with the the multi-crew ship seat actions which apparently a lot of people have been wondering including myself what it means and how in-depth they will be and if this is something you're really interested in and it really excites you read the post the link will be in description because i will only be doing a brief a brief of it you know briefly got touching upon it and saying what it generally consists of there's a lot more in-depth detail on the post there's some images as well so check it out if it's if you're interested in it because it is definitely exciting i'll give you the brief rundown of what you know we're going to get and basically it's it's in a way to encourage co-op play they really want to encourage people to work together obviously you can play solo but if me and br my brother and i we started on games where the only co-op you could do was with each other sat side by side and it is scary at first if you're not a, a con if you're not playing online against people or with people because you feel like you might be inadequate, you might embarrass yourself. But the fact is, just jump in there, get in with it. You know the games are going to go more and more cooperative and multiplayer. It's just how the the they're developing. So get in there and just play it. It's it can be scary at first, but you'll you'll find it is far more rewarding. I mean, honestly. Not everyone is good, you know, you're going to jump in there, you might be a bit shoddy at first, but you'll eventually come come to it, you know, just, just get in there. So starting with, with the different seats, we obviously know of piloting, you know, flying, uh, being on the gunner seats, but there's also navigation and engineering. And this plan that they've got, what, what we hear here is just the plan. It's not a final thing, so keep that in mind. But it is obviously an idea of the, the way they're heading. So in regards to the Carrick, they say, you can play solo using the ship systems, which will do everything for you. You can you don't have to worry about you know your navigations and stuff. It'll, you can use it in the pilot seat and get it all sorted while you're flying. But if you were to have other people on board, it would make it far more efficient. It would help you with piloting because you can focus on your own specific role and leave them to it. But they've sort of broken it into three categories. So smaller ships like the single seater ships, like the 300, the Aurora, the Hornet. The systems that are on board, which you can control yourself, there is no need to have anyone else on board because the systems will come to your screens, your UI, and it will help you make adjustments on the fly that, that are necessary. Capital ships at the other end of the spectrum, like the Javelin, 
will require multiple crew. And this can be NPC, it doesn't have to be real players, so if you are fearful of having real players on, you can have NPCs, but again, they will probably not be as good as a real player could be. So, bear that in mind. And obviously there's things like manning the turrets, reloading torpedo bays, and repairing things like power relays. So other ships, the sort of mid-range ones, which are multi-crewed but can be flown, you know, like the Retaliator, the Redeemer, the Connie, everything else can, can be flown solo. As I say, the systems will manage themselves with giving you information up to date on, you know, on the, like, real time telling you what's going on. But you would be better off with a with a with a full crew and if you think about in terms of if you have if there's the same ship one with a solo flight you know one with one person on board controlling everything and then another one with a full crew the full crew is the most likely it's going to win because they will be more efficient they'll have dedicated people to targeting things to sending out disruptions for the systems and stuff so it would in the big persistent universe you will be better off with a full crew so these stations that will be on board for real people to control are actually physical objects that you interact with so like a console that you would sit at or stand at with its own ui a computer screen for whichever role you are partaking in and it will update you with real-time information that you can adjust on the fly to help yourselves out with say like when you attach or install a new system or an item it will sync with the ship's computer allowing you to see the actions and the information that it's that it's generating so obviously like if, say if you put on a cheap power plant the interface will be rudimentary whereas a better quality one will be far superior and you'll have more control as well as obviously the component being a lot better and a lot more sophisticated so the action lists included for things like shield management is you can reinforce your shield in certain areas you can boost it in certain areas so you can boost it at the front or at the back you know or all around and you can fine tune it as well so there's a lot to do with that there's the radar operations which is identifying targets focusing in a certain area maybe like a cone shape like the metal gate on the guards where you can find hidden targets if they're hiding in certain areas or in the black space that you wouldn't necessarily see if you were just doing a general scan you can flag targets which include things like allies in distress so you can flag them to help them or you can flag dangerous opponents if you want to make them tap the main target and you can scan and identify like subsystems on larger ships so if you're looking for a specific system where maybe if there's a big sort of fleet coming in you want to knock out the communications so they don't call in the rest of the boys you can target that specific system either use electronic warfare or shoot it or whatever and and get rid of it so EWA which brings us on to electronic warfare station you can either dampen the uh, the opponents you can disrupt them you can disable them or you can debuff which i won't go into which each one means read it it's definitely worth reading then there's obviously the comms which is going to be a big importance if you're in a bigger ship and you have and you're playing with multiple ship friends you know lots of lots of other ships you can open a channel to another to another vessel and communicate between them you can set up a conference call which is useful for when you're in a fleet and you want to have everyone on the same page you can deliver information to other ships like your cargo manifesto useful i suppose if you're a pirate and you're wanting to know what's on board or if you've got like things like docking collars you can request a dock with another ship and i'm hoping in the position universe because if i am flying around in my aurora or another sh similar ship smaller than the big ones and i see something like a starfarer and i've never been on board i will want to look on board this ship now obviously there runs the risk of flying up to them and then them just thinking right i'm going to take you out when you don't expect it but it'll be nice to be able to see other people in trading lanes and just join them on board and have a cup of tea i suppose i don't know other than that there's things like scanner arrays there's your avionics and sort of cpu where it talks about your your flight controls which you can you can manage it's got power management obviously for every other system you can put more power to you can take power away from you can turn off to allow other areas other systems to have more power and you've got things like navigation so you'll have someone maybe in the carrick especially plotting a course making sure that the route doesn't take you through any pirate areas or you know just just basically finding the best route so i'll put up a picture now of the basic idea of what the ui layout will be so it's it is subject to change but it, you get the idea so it's 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 like a screen which correlates with all your ship systems manned or unmanned i suppose it will be but you can as you can see in certain areas you can request more power or less power you can turn systems on and off as i've just said there's a lot to do with it you can you know you can probably request pilot or the captain if he's not piloting his static sort of his station that you need help in a certain like starboard or maybe in the end in the um in the engine bay because your ships are, your parts are on fire you need help to put it out you know you can 
talk, and obviously each each area of the ship will have its own little navigate um, communication device where you push a button or whatever and say, you know, engineering to the bridge, we need help or whatever. So it's, there's going to be a lot to play with. It's going to be a game in itself, just controlling and managing a full multi-crew ship. So you get presets so you can quickly change it on the fly to a full different setup. You've got a log, you've got notifications, as I've just mentioned. They say this is just the beginning, and it is. It's the first time we've really heard fully about what we're expecting to see in this. As new mechanics are introduced, they will be expanded on this but it is huge information this and very very exciting a lot of people have probably been waiting for this including myself and it's exciting to hear what's going to happen so please please read it if you can't be bothered i hope i've covered the majority of it so with the new changeover of the month from obviously november to december we got another monthly report which is a report that they send out from every single office within cig oh well within star citizen which tells us and updates us on what they've been doing so starting as always with santa monica in uh, cig set in santa monica they have the engineering department have been working on missile and signature systems which apparently should be finalized now so that's good um there's a change to all to how all items react with each other and this is to do with the the signatures they give off so things like radars missiles targeting and computers will behave in a much more realistic data-driven fashion which is very important when it comes to knowing what your ship's doing. All items now emit either electromagnetic, heat or cross-section signatures. So every item will have its own little signature depending on which type and you have to manage that depending on what missiles are being fired at you and, and who you're up against, I suppose. And so like if you use something more, it will give out more of those emissions. So it's power management. There was the first introduction to ESP for finer aiming which stands for Enhanced Stick Precision, which is for better aiming. Integrated uh, an analytics capturing tool as well, which is to see all the different analytics that's happening within the game and it helps them to update it and keep an eye on what's happening, basically. So the art department are getting all ships ready for version 1.0. And I must stress, this, this the majority of this article is they're all working for 1.0. A lot of it is the same. That 1.0 patch, which is coming out end of this year, is big news for everyone. It is the first iteration of it being properly developed, and obviously it's a big job for them. So, you know, including new paint system. Uh, they've created new weapons and missiles and items to be introduced for version 1.0, and they're different to what we have currently seen, which will open up new gameplay opportunities. And this is exciting. This is why Chris said a while ago when we all got 10,000 UEC credits, or UE credits, to hold on to them, because if you go spending them away, you might not be able to get a better gun, and I, I want to get rid of my M3 uh, A lasers. I hope they uh, put it in where we can sell them. That would be good because they're crap. Anyway, there was the concept sale for ships this last month, which was big, big, big news, and it got us a lot of stretch goals, including the, the Carrick, which had its own little mini game. Really cool. Play it if you uh, if you want to. It's it's fun. It's it's like uh, reading a story where you make decisions depending on what you think, and then you know see how far you can get. I think I got quite far, but saying that I don't know where the end is, so I might not have done. They're also working on a new hood for the ships to coincide with all the new items, etc., which is going to be obviously for version 1.0 because they need to really finalise the hood for all the items that are added and make sure they link up together and you can see exactly what sort of admissions are being given out. So cinematics. There is a new carrot commercial coming out, plus one other project that, that's happening that they're working on later this month. They haven't stressed what it is, but I'm sure it'll be for that live stream on the 19th, so we shall see. So moving over to CIG in Austin, the art department have completed completed art core. So the next up is obviously Terra, Terra Prime, and they're figuring out the flight paths on how you'd enter the city. So like what we saw in art core, how you get in from space or to, yeah, to planet side, they're figuring that out. And apparently it is the uh, Terra Prime is one of the most visually ambitious cities. And I'm very looking forward to seeing that. So shops, two of them complete. Oh no, sorry, TD, TDD is complete. Cubby Blast and G-Lock Bar are moving forward fast. Concept is being done for the hospital, planet side. NPC concept work is underway, and there's lots of that apparently. And also lots of props like bunk beds, computers, chairs, plates, lamps, plus they say 1,000 others, or thousands others, should I say. So improvements to the environmental arts pipeline is coming along efficiently, efficiently and consistently, and it's a big job, obviously. These are just the first few planets. So design have completed the basic layout for the Delamar landing zone in the Nink system or the Nick system. Now this was something we mentioned last week. We didn't know why they were specifying the Nick system. It's such a random system, but apparently it's come out that it's the first lawless system to come online. So it will not be under UEE 
control and this is obviously to part of the the PU demo maybe the social demo hopefully where you can go to different places and they're also brainstorming how Elphonic's FPS design will work with things like shopping you know getting missions from people meeting peaceful NP NPCs and so forth so how are the the whole mechanics of the AI of the um, first person shooter like moving around basically how it will iterate with other other objects so the next landing zones have been identified and work has begun on two of them they didn't say what they were though they're flashing out a list of NPC AI animations ready for the motion cap so things like picking items up I suppose everything that the AI would be doing they're having a big mocap shoot in December and they are coming up with a list of of different animations that they're gonna capture so in the engineering side of Austin the chat and friend systems will hopefully be online mid-December, which is brilliant. So we get to chat with our friends and so forth. Work is being done to allow multiple players to be in one hangar. Now, this is something they mentioned before that they were looking to do, where you can join your friends in your other hangars and just check out the ships and just have a good time. So that's coming along well. 64-bit or large world is the name for this, this project. Conversion continues. Now, this is to make it so it is... Instead of it being like it is now about 8 kilometers wide, you can make it millions of kilometers wide. It, it's currently running at 32 bits, so it's, it's going to make a big difference to the game map size. Uh, QA, which are the testing group, they are mainly focused on testing the version 1.0 Arena Commander, which again we'll see later this month, so obviously they are working hard to make sure everything is right before we launch the patch. So the live operations, the development ops, they're improving launcher and adding analytics. Also, they've fixed the Arena Commander connectivity issue. Now, I know a lot of people were finding issues with this. We had someone commenting on, on our video, a regular commenter, hi if that's you, who says that he can't connect to... Um, to the to the game and this was probably the issue so they've they've fixed that now so if you if you haven't tested it since see if you can do it lots of behind the scenes stuff really important stuff that we don't often see and it's down to them for they are the people that ship out all the patches they are the ones that ship out all the flare items and they do a lot of balancing as well so it, again bigs up to them because it's behind the scenes that don't often get the the attention they deserve also when they're enhancing security like raising the network security the details are classified they can't obviously let us know because then people will know how to hack into it but it's going to be really important because we don't want cheaters so foundry 42 the outside have created the interior tier building for the, the shuban interstellar now this is the mining base that we'll see in the uh, squadron 42 and they're getting an idea of what's being what's what being inside it is like not only like is it functional but it's, it's like, they say it's like mechanically beautiful as well so it's it's a functional mining base which is insane usually you see these are just prop holders but really it is actually doing something so they're prepping the gladiator for or hangar release they're refining the retaliator interior and they're working on getting the gladius flight ready as well so hopefully that will come with version 1.0 now there's something else to mention which is the argo utility vehicle vehicle is getting some attention now i have no idea what that actually means i don't know what the argo utility vehicle is it might be some sort of repair vehicle i don't know anyway the address in the javelin interiors are still ongoing and they will apparently feature heavily in squadron 42 so if you didn't get to buy one or if you feel like your chances of even being on board one is very slim you will get to see them in squadron 42 and i expect we shall be on board them or maybe I, I, I doubt we'll be flying them but who knows you never know anyway um they're creating the final versions of the gladius and gladiator weapons and missile racks so the, the, those ships are really coming together well and obviously the gladius is going to be flight ready soon awesome work guys so animation the retaliator is being rigged and animated the pre-visual animations are being pumped out to test conversation systems now this is a system that chris roberts has come up with which should be a little more dynamic than what we've seen be, uh, before in other games uh, they're making sure the sleeping pods or rescue pods system is working as they hoped which is good obviously your bed on board your ships are going to be your escape pods as well they're prepping the mocap shoot or the prep for the mocap shoot is underway it's a big mocap shoot at the end of this month there's a lot of work going into it i expect so visual effects the damage effects well, basically, the way they've put it is damage effects, damage effects, damage effects, which is what they've been working on intently. It's the quality smoke, quality fire, and sparks and explosions, so the it's going to look graphically better than it, it did originally. Anyway, so for characters, they've built and tested the facial scanning rig. Now, this consists of 48 SLR cameras, which I know I bought my girlfriend one last last birthday, and it was about 300 quid. And obviously, that was that was actually one of the lowest range 
a SLR. So they've got 48 of these, which can take pictures in one one hundredth of a second, and there's going to be 70 plus facial expressions. Will this sh be much better facial anima animations than LA Noir? Because they did a really good job with theirs. I wonder if this is actually going to be a lot better than that, so we can see what people are thinking, saying, NPCs anyway. Which is brilliant. I mean, the, the, the level of detail they're going for everything. They're not sparing anything. Everything is getting completely updated to to next 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 gen you know it's not even this gen really anyway the audio they're updating the ship computer voices there's a little snippet on there for the ui warning sounds where you can listen to the ideas that they've got so far they are pretty freaky but what they're thinking of doing is that if they get get these sounds that you recognize you will hear the sound and immediately know what it is over time you know after you've learned it a bit so you don't need to see the warning sign on your screen you can hear the sound and think shit i've got a missile coming in or this system is down you know really useful and a nice little way of doing it too so ships they are working on thrusters and i think that's to do with the signatures and they're talking to companies regarding the 3d 3d audio which you'll have the biggest benefit with headphones and obviously things like the rift where it'll be a proper audio system so it won't just be you know it's supposed to be in that direction so we'll put it on the left hand side or it's supposed to be on the right it's going to be directional and it'll be distance as well a lot like sort of f i think they're using f mods but i know they're moving over to some sort of ww type mod of sound system but it'll, it'll be really immersive if, you know, you'll be on a, a space station, you'll hear something, you'll know exactly where it's coming from. So programming, this is what I mean. They're moving to the WYS for audio. I don't know what that is. If you are an audio tech guy or you know what it is, please put in the comments because I am completely lost with it. It's supposed to be better than FMOD. I know, I know a lot of mods on Armour used FMOD, which proves how good it should be. So the continuing work on the Zero G traversal and a new looting mechanism as well. And they're also working on takeoff and landing and conversation and reputation systems. A lot of information there we can delve into, but we won't because short on time, I think. Design. The rear view camera first implementation is in. The Vandal Swarm 18 Waves is, I suppose it's not in yet. I didn't, I thought it might be. I was supposed to do it today where I play, you know, show you some footage of me playing with all the different Hornets, but there's only the one Hornet. There's the F7A trainer and it was very, very, my FPS was atrocious to the point that I couldn't play it. I did a little look at the, the thing itself, but when I tried to go and play in Vandal Swarm, it just wasn't having, having it. I'm very worried at the moment. But anyway, all new assets have gone into the, the race maps so everything they've been designing they've put it in the the race maps to make it more more robust they're designing a tutorial for arena commander so if you're new to the game or if you've been waiting for a tutorial on how to fly and how to approach and all the different aspects of it because it's a big game which involves a lot of new things a lot of learn it's a big learning curve and a bit like armor is you know you go into armor for the first time it's just daunting but it's like that so they're going to give some tutorials on how to get into it and how to play around the best thing i found is just going into the free mode where you can like free fly like fly around you know play around with the controls play around with your systems turn off your systems just get in just get to grips with it but obviously 1.0 will come out and it'll change a lot of things so probably wait for then so squadron 42 the location white box reviews are progressing well so they're obviously reviewing the white boxing that's been happening for all the different locations just making sure it's going in the right direction so over to behavior the design the level design team are hard at work prepping tons of planet side locations still unannounced but they're obviously working Working hard there. The tag system, room system, and Moby Glass Easy Shop app are being put together to prototype with the first shop, and apparently the tests are promising. So they're now able to spawn procedurally generated shop layouts with dynamic content, which is based on things like the economy, which is excellent. So they don't have to hand design each shop. It's just going to be procedurally generated, like the planets and the systems will be eventually, and like um, like the damage states for the big Bengal carriers and, and bigger ships which will make it so much more efficient and will get them all out there for us to play with. So there's a lot of energy going into the Moby Glass. The Skyline app, which is your sort of navigation map app, uh, where you can plan routes is coming along well. They're working with Turbulent for a couple of holiday hangar surprises as well and some subscriber flair, so I'm looking forward to that. Now, Art Department are working on Terra Area and Backdrop, and apparently it's a big atrium where vegetation blends into like man-made structures, and it all takes place inside a large iconic building they say which is intriguing so ui they're working on the moby glass home screen that was brief so ilphonic the fps team they are working on zero g traversal the cover system and the crawl into sort of stealth you know the crawl mechanic 
as a lot of other teams are working together, like like Foundry 42, just to get it because it's obviously been iterated in Squadron 42. So you can you you know you can crawl into little spaces and hide and stealth. Stealth gameplay will hopefully play a big part of it because I do enjoy that. So design the white boxing the FPS module levels now, and artists are working on more weapons and gadgets, including the grappling hook, which is apparently useful in zero G. That sounds quite interesting. So then over to Turbulent, and again another group who have such a big job, but it's a lot of it is behind the scenes that we don't know about and credit is due to them because they are the ones that create the home page they work on all the websites and you know they've got a, they've got a big job so basically they're working on a new home page for for newcomers but making sure that it's recognizable by veterans now obviously it's kind of like uh, swings and roundabouts the veterans uh, backers will be like well i don't want to change that because i'm used to it but obviously it can be quite quite confusing and daunting for new backers who come in and see this website and don't really know where they're supposed to go to find out information and stuff which is again why i'm doing this video so they're coming up with a system that makes it work the home page works a lot better for everyone i'm all the four i'm all for that whatever helps new people is, is always best we'll always adapt you know they're preparing new tools for account holders including the contact list and leaderboards so which is something i've been looking forward to it's contact list it's nice to have people on that website that you are in contact with in regards to the game because so far it's third party websites that you're trying to contact each other through and obviously email and it's thanks to these guys actually that we we saw the carrick mini game if you haven't had a play play on it it's fun very fun. So over to Moon Collider, who is the people working on the AI, all the rocket scientists and very clever people. Now, obviously, a lot of their work is based around Arena Commander for version 1.0. And again, a lot of it is very much the same as what's going on with other people. You know, they're working on the persistent universe NPCs. They're giving them interesting things to do. So they're not just stood around doing nothing. And they're also creating tools to make their lives a lot easier. So development tools for creating certain things, which, I mean, I probably wouldn't understand anyway. So engineering, so they're working on the occlusion feature, which is something we saw in Bug Smashers one one week, where if a ta if an enemy's targeting you and you go behind an object, you will disappear off the radar because it's not picking you up on the basic radar that's obviously just like a bat sonar. So this was actually confusing the enemy quite a bit and they didn't really know what to do. They couldn't figure out why you'd gone. So they're honing it in to make sure that they maybe search for you rather than just thinking, oh, he's gone, let's move on. You know, so a lot of work in that area. And also the fine tuning the AI flight and combat back to make it a bit more balanced because if you give more control over to the AI enemy then they'll be harder to beat but sometimes they can be overpowered so they're having to do a lot of balancing there but that was the monthly report I hope it made sense I'm sorry I've got a cold again as always so if I'm a little sniffy or not sniffy but if I'm a little bunged up and it's been a nightmare to hear it I apologize so also this week we met with the new CIG dev which is Omar Aweda. He is one of the concept artists working close with Gurma. He's the one that designed the character. There's a new fan spotlight which is to do with Flight Controls version Volume 2 and it's all the different peoples, all the fans out there who have created their own, I suppose, cockpit for their computer in their own house which I intend to do myself. Uh, there's a new episode of Showdown. I haven't read that yet. I probably shall do later on when I'm having a poo, maybe. There's also a HOTAS poll. This is quite important. All the people who don't know, Star Citizen are creating their own official HOTAS setup or their own joystick setup control system and they put out, put out a poll there for people to tell them what they wanted to see whether you wanted just a joystick you know a proper HOTAS setup which is hands-on throttle and stick go in and give your impressions because obviously this will make a difference in, the, in when it gets developed there's also law builder number 24 which is to do with free time and it's how sort of ways to kill your you know ways to, that people inside Star Citizen will kill time and probably money I expect or UEC credits UE credits, I keep saying UEC credits, but it doesn't make sense. Get in there and have a read or give your thoughts across. Maybe there's a card game, go to racing events, but that's that's about it. Right, so thanks for watching. That's all for this week's Star Citizen Sunday. As always, please comment if you've got anything to say. I want to hear your thoughts. Any way to improve the show, subscribe for more Star Citizen Sundays and the new system guide, which will be coming out soon. Don't forget to like it and show me your support, and I shall see you in the verse.